You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. All right. This podcast, you do not want to miss a single moment of any segment. There is just all kinds of craziness on all different aspects of every part of our system and society that are breaking today. And news is breaking every second of every day. That's not hype. I've never known a news cycle like this. And what's happening, these evildoers, that's what I'm starting to call them now, evildoers, the Uniparty, the Deep Settle, these people, these evildoers, are attacking us on every possible front yeah. so that there's so many balls in the air, we can't juggle them all. And there's some big stories that we're going to cover today. And there was a major, major follow-up, which is the title of the show with Marjorie Taylor Greene and this Biden informant. Now, a couple weeks back, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Comer, they got this great committee. They're investigating all the financial crimes of Joe Biden, which are many. His financial crimes go back before a lot of us were even born. I mean, there hasn't been a time that he's been in public office. He hasn't been doing crime. In fact, he went into public office to do crime and make money as a corrupt Uh public official. They might find things when he was a senator. I'm sure they would. Yeah. From day one. So Comer went on Maria Bartiromo on Fox Business over the weekend. I was talking about this this morning. I'm going to play this audio, and then we have a major update with Marjorie Taylor Greene we'll get to after. But one of the informants was missing. Oh. And, you know, this, that's pretty scary. We're dealing with some really creepy people, and there were a lot of people around the Clintons that things happened to, right? Vince Foster, right? Yeah. right? Vince Foster. And there were others. You know, a lot of people. And if you remember during the first campaign of President Trump's, when Hillary was running against President Trump, Bill Clinton's black son, Danny Williams, was out there talking. When's the last time you heard from Danny Williams? Oh, yeah. It's been a while. So, yeah, they, they bought him off. You know, but, but the, the, the thing about it is he when, got lucky. when someone comes forward as a whistleblower against Trump, they get book deals, they're yeah. honored guests on Meet the Press. They're celebrated on all the mainstream media. If you're a whistleblower, and that's when, you know, Trump hasn't done anything to whistleblow on. Right? Right. He's, when you're a, a true whistleblower, when you're a true informant on the criminal enterprise of the Biden crime family, all of a sudden you're public enemy number one and you've got to be stopped. So Comer went on Fox Business, and I want to highlight, I did not watch Fox, okay? The boycott of Fox News extends to Fox Business. Sorry. This I picked up, it was on Twitter over the weekend, this video. It was right. all over Twitter, not even on the Fox like Twitter feed. People had taken it and put it up there. And our boycott of Fox News has been very successful. Not only are their numbers tanking, Fox News so desperate to bring viewers back, they were going to air the Trump rally on Saturday night. Now, That's of course, crazy. they didn't because the rally was canceled. But anyway, yeah. so let me first play Comer uh, this this was amazing. This was yesterday, Fox Business, Maria Bartiromo, the informant against Joe Biden has gone missing. Let me play it. Are there whistleblowers or informants missing right now? Well, with, with, with what we've investigated and the people that we've tracked down, uh, going back to the CEFC, uh, the two main players in that business, as well as all the Americans that were involved in the uh, different Biden uh, influence peddling schemes, as well as the Serbian national, uh, the nine of the 10 people uh, that we've identified that have very good knowledge with respect to the Bidens, they're, they're one of three things, Maria. They're either currently in court, they're currently in jail, or they're currently missing. Okay, now there's more, and I'll get to that. See, these people that are in court and in jail are facing all kinds of legal things, so they're remaining silent. That you can't compel someone right. to incriminate themselves, so they're you know so they're not accessible. And then we got someone who's missing. 
So it's of the utmost importance that the FBI work with us to be able to try to identify uh, what research they've done, what investigations they've done, because we have people that want to come forward. But honestly, Maria, they fear for their lives. Not only are the Biden lawyers and the Biden White House intimidating them, the media is trying to intimidate and discredit them. And I think if you look at the Rasmussen poll, you know, seven in 10 Americans are very concerned that Joe Biden's involved in a, a public corruption scheme and they want to know more information. Seven in 10 Americans strongly support the work that our House Oversight Committee is doing investigating the Biden influence peddling. And we just need to get some cooperation from uh, these different deep state bureaucracies that are standing in our way. Uh, this is absolutely extraordinary and it is stunning that some people are missing that you need to prove this. Who in the White House is intimidating these people? Do you know? I do know. Uh, we're saving that for a later time. Uh, but I can tell you one thing that a lot of people don't know. When, when I issue a subpoena to a bank or to an individual, the second I issue that, Jamie Raskins gets that. And when we get information in from the bank or, or from any individual, they make two copies, one for the majority, which are the Republicans, one for the minority, which are the Democrats. And my biggest problem with the Democrats on the House Oversight Committee is they're acting as a criminal defense attorney for the Biden family. Okay. So, okay. Now, that was yesterday. Now, i got a big update we'll get to in a moment. So, what's going on here, and he mentioned Jamie Raskin by name, right? He's the Democrat on the committee. The committee cannot operate in secret from the other party because, you know, even though the Republicans are the majority, the Democrats are the minority, they're entitled to all the information that comes to the committee, the Democrats. And, and if we were in the minority, it'd be the same thing. So, what's happening is... Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Comer have whistleblowers, they have witnesses, they have evidence, and as soon as they get it, right. it's given to the White House, the deep state, the powers that be, right. and then they do their work to silence the witness. It, yes. They're given that information exactly. by law, they have to. Yeah. So that gives them an opportunity to intercede and, and do whatever Intimidate they Intimidate the witness, yeah. buy off the witness, do something so they can't be found, right. you know. And that's a that's a pretty scary thing. Sure it is. And a lot of people, and when you hear this update from Marjorie Taylor Greene, you'll see how sharp Comer is. A lot of people, MAGA people, are like, well, why is Comer going public with it? When you today, I heard people talk. I, people call me on the show this morning. Why? Why would he come forward with this? Right. Because you want to put a spotlight on what's going on, and you put a spot. These people, they're like they're like cockroaches. Okay, when the light comes on. Psh, the cockroaches run for the crevices. That's, that's exactly right. That's that's how these Democrats are. Yeah. So Comer and Marjorie Taylor Greene are a good team. So Comer goes on Barter Romo yesterday, talks about this informant missing. And then all of a sudden, it's it, it's not just on Barter Romo. People are talking about it. I'm talking about it on the air. It's all over social media. It's all over the Internet. And these cockroaches in the Democrat Party, the deep state, the Uniparty, these evildoers, they start to panic. Right. So then Marjorie Taylor, then something happened. Marjorie Taylor Greene was on with the incredible Steve Bannon and talked about the informant. This is this this just happened today. And I want to be very clear, everyone watching again today, our whistleblower that brought us evidence that leads directly to Joe Biden, that Joe Biden took a payment from a foreign national in exchange for foreign policy favors. That whistleblower is not lost and they are safe, but they do fear for their lives. That whistleblower came through us, uh, thankfully, through the help of Senator Grassley. So that is that is a fact. That is the truth. But other whistleblowers, yes, they are missing. They're either in court, uh, they're in jail, or we cannot talk with them at this time because they can't be found. This is a very real situation that we're talking about, and our investigation is so important, Steve, um, that this will bring down the President of the United States. And I want to let everyone know something. We're going back to the Treasury Department today at 1 o'clock because we have more financial records that we have to review uh, leading to to the Biden family and Joe Biden himself. Okay, so wow. so the main informant that came forward is in communication with Marjorie Taylor Greene and other good MAGA Republicans. They're in, they're in fear for their life now. These people that they can't find that are in the in the in the prison system, 
They're in the prison system. They may even be in a foreign prison, but even if they're in the American prison system, they're being transferred around. And it's not easy to locate people in the prison system if the people that control the system, which are the people you're trying to bring down, control that. So this, what's going on here right now with Marjorie Taylor Greene and Comer, these are two American heroes. And I want to tell you guys, do not let anyone tell you that Trump did not win the midterm elections in the Congress, okay? Mm -hmm. I know we didn't win the Senate back, and we didn't win as many seats as we wanted back, but all that's happening that we're talking about right now with these informants would not be happening if we did not fire Nancy Pelosi and take over the House of Representatives. And we are so lucky to have Marjorie Taylor Greene Mm -hmm. in the Congress because she's like the president's point man, President Trump's Yeah, she's incredible. I know she's a woman, but she's a point man. Very tough. And uh, oh. there's not a lot of politicians like her. And she must be like Trump, completely squeaky clean, because they have investigated every sure. aspect of her life. And they've not been able to bring her down, even through a divorce. Yeah. I think they're going to impeach Biden over this. And, oh, yeah. And um, that's becoming the norm, I guess, impeaching yeah. presidents. But I hope that these whistleblowers have, like, evidence. Not that I'm saying they're not being honest, but they need to have mm-hmm. some kind of proof for the American people to really mm-hmm. look at this and be like, you know, so people on the left cannot dispute it yeah. because if it just, if they just tell you something, yeah. they'll say they're just lying. You mm-hmm. know, they're not being honest. They're just lying. They're yeah. being paid or they're being whatever. Or they're Trump people. I hope they come forth with some kind of documentation, emails or something to show or money exchanged or something like bank records. And I did, didn't they get his bank records or what? Yeah, they got some and they get more. And you know what they did show they would made 10 million from foreign com- mm-hmm. countries. So. What's going on with these informants when Raskin gets the names and then gives them to the to the bad to the criminals? Can you imagine you know, what they're do what the Democrats are doing on this committee would be like um El Chapo is on trial mm-hmm. and there's witnesses, there's a jury and yeah. everything else and and you give El Chapo right. the names of the jury all the witnesses so that, that the El Chapo cartel can yeah. go out and track them down and their families and intimidate. Yeah. That's what's going on here. Biden and these Democrats are like El Chapo on trial. And, it, you know, these these whistleblowers are very, very, very brave. They're being investigated. Their families are being investigated. Oh, yeah. They're probably not just them, but their children, their grandparents, if they're around, their aunts, their uncles, their cousins, their nieces, their nephews, forever. I mean, they're going back. Oh, yeah. They're going back decades to try to find one thing to discredit these. Now, some of these informants may have a sketchy past, but typically people that know about crimes that become informants have some sketchy backgrounds. That's just the way it is. Well, speaking of sketchy backgrounds, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene said that it's possible that some of these Russian hookers will have to testify. That's right. Which would be lots of fun. Oh, by the way, Hunter Biden's Russian and Ukrainian hookers. Right, exactly. Yeah, oh, could you imagine? Which would be loads of fun. I wonder how they would dress when they come into the congressional hearing. Would they dress like hookers or would they dress like nice? like Stormy Daniels. Oh, no, 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 no. They're, 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 Higher they're, tier. They're, they're high, yeah, maybe. They're higher tier than Stormy Well, Daniels. yeah, wasn't one like $25,000 she spent on her in one night? That's pretty high level. Yeah, you know, but no, that's- But they're the, still hookers. That's the one that he paid for with right. Joe Biden's credit card. Well, it'll be interesting. And when is all this going to take place? It's going on right now, right now, today. No, but I mean the actual hearings. Well, we don't are know. Are they going to be on TV? We don't know. Oh, that's a good question. Are they, they now the, the Congress will allow them to be te- uh, televised, but will- the mainstream right. fake news media televise them other than Newsmax. Well, you know, I I would not be surprised because we are talking about politics. If some Democratic politicians would be behind not only impeaching Joe Biden, but voting him out to make mm-hmm. way for Newsom or Cuomo or some other person that they want in there. Because I don't think a lot of these Democrats want Biden in there. They feel he's too old and... uh but he does play their game. The, the, you know, he does go along with whatever they want. So, you know, we'll see what happens mm. with that. But I don't know. I'm sure there are some people in his party not happy with him, um, that he's uh, radicalized things so much mm-hmm. and taken things so far to the extreme. But uh, we'll see. It'll be very interesting how this all plays you out know, this year. You know, they spent all these years trying to frame Trump up on criminal charges when he's never broken a law. Yeah. And here we've got the most criminal 
president we've ever had. He even makes Bill Clinton look law abiding. Yeah. And the media are are covering it up. Now listen, well, they're covering it up because they they will yeah. do anything to keep Trump out of office. Now we're gonna take our first break. Don't go anywhere. There is so much to cover on today's show. You won't want to miss one second of this program. I'm Brian Gregg, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be right back. Parents, grandparents, and teachers, there's a heartwarming new children's book from author James Carey that you will want to add to your child's must-read list. Strong Evan, Evan and the Adventures of Diabetes, now available on Amazon. Join Evan, a young boy living with diabetes, as he embarks on a series of exciting adventures while learning to manage his condition. Evan refuses to let diabetes hold him back, and with the help of his continuous glucose monitor, insulin pump, and the support of his loving family, he lives life to the fullest. From playing soccer and swimming to climbing mountains and exploring the ocean, he shows that anything is possible when you have determination and a positive attitude. Throughout the book, Evan and his family cook healthy meals and engage in open conversation about managing diabetes. This book teaches valuable life lessons and will inspire young readers. Strong Evan is an engaging and educational story that empowers children to face challenges head on while promoting understanding and empathy for those living with diabetes. Order your copy of Strong Strong Evan, Evan and the Adventures of Diabetes, from author James Carey, on Amazon right now. And give your child the gift of courage, confidence, and compassion with this wonderful children's book. Have you dreamed of starting a successful online business but didn't know how or even where to begin? If you're ready to turn your dreams of a successful online business into reality, look no further. Introducing How to Start an Online Business, your ultimate guide to navigating the exciting world of online commerce. This comprehensive resource is designed to equip aspiring entrepreneurs just like you with the knowledge, tools, and strategies needed to launch and grow your digital venture. From idea to successful launch, how to Start an Online Business provides step-by-step guidance and valuable insights at every stage of your entrepreneurial journey. It's packed with actionable tips, real-life case studies, and expert advice from successful online entrepreneurs. How to Start an Online Business is more than just theory. It's a practical resource that empowers you to make informed decisions and overcome obstacles. No matter your background or experience level, this book can help you harness the power of the Internet and create your digital empire. Visit eTech eCommerce com slash opt dash in for a free video and ebook on how to start an online business. eTechEcommerce.com slash opt dash in and begin your journey to online entrepreneurship. eTechEcommerce.com slash opt dash in. Betting enthusiast, have you ever found yourself stuck in a rut trying to navigate the betting industry? You're not alone, and the solution is Calculated Betting Tips. Calculated Betting Tips know the struggle, and they've dedicated themselves to making your betting experience as profitable as possible. With Calculated Betting Tips, you're not just betting, you're investing. They've brought together the most successful tipsters around, each with an impressive track record of consistent wins. They're placing bets and gathering that insider info for you. They're your gateway to making the most of your sports betting hobby. No more blind bets, no more unnecessary losses. With Calculated Betting Tips, you're on the winning team. Visit calculatedbettingtips.co.uk. That's calculatedbettingtips.co.uk and get the winning edge in your betting game. Calculated Betting Tips. Betting simplified. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. By the way, The Brian Craig Show Podcast, which you are listening to now, is available on all podcast platforms. If there's a podcast platform, the Brian Craig Show podcast is on it. I also upload the podcast to our YouTube channel. And typically what we do is we upload on YouTube, we upload the podcast at 8 p.m. Eastern. We've taken over Tucker Carlson's old time slot. And we do that with a live premiere and a live chat room. And like my morning show chat room, it's very lively, very active, a lot of people in there. Only difference is I'm in there, more active in that chat room mm-hmm. than I am in the mornings because right. I can't be active during that chat room. And Kathy's in there, of course. 
And that's on my YouTube channel, Brian Craig Show on YouTube. So and make watch, sure you check that and out. And watch the merch shelf on all the videos now. You'll see products that we sell, T-shirts and mugs and stickers. All very MAGA with Trump four stuff. four original designs. Yes. Uh, that you'll only get in our shop, and you yeah. can uh, click on those links. They're below every video now That's on, on YouTube. YouTube, yeah. And uh, do a little shopping if you'd like to. We have some really nice T-shirts. And mugs and stuff. And mugs, and you mm -hmm. can choose your own colors, too, if you don't like the colors we did. But mm -hmm. pretty oh, yeah. cool stuff. We have Absolutely. people ordering that, so. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. So I appreciate that, guys. And uh, sometimes I, I'll uh, have personal appearances and people show up and they're wearing one of my T-shirts. It's That's pretty awesome. cool. It's pretty cool. Okay. So we've got that great committee with Comer and Marjorie Taylor Greene. And now we got another committee with Jim Jordan, who's kicking all kinds of butt. Now, keep in mind, they'll tell you, they'll tell you we lost the midterms. Even that canned ham, Carl Rove will say, oh, we lost it. We lost canned ham. He looks like I, a canned I ham. I call him Humpty Dumpty. <clears throat> Humpty Dumpty. I like yeah. Humpty Dumpty, though. You know what he's more like than Humpty Dumpty, Mr. Potato Head? I like Mr. Potato Head. I like Mr. Canned Potato Head. Canned ham, I guess, works. Canned ham. Not, there's not like a character. Yeah. Canned ham with a whiteboard. He's ridiculous. But he's so desperate to get back. But in, we, won, the House. we won. We won. And we've got these great MAGA Republicans. And, and here's Jim Jordan and his committee. And this just broke today, too. And this is huge. So the uh, Uniparty evildoers have two MAGA committees working against them. Let me read through this story. This, this story just broke today. Three FBI officials will testify on alleged abuses of power by FBI leadership. This is the, testifying to Jim Jordan's committee, um, ranging from discrimination against conservatives to inflation of domestic terrorism statistics. That's, what, that, that's that whole thing over the weekend where Biden said the biggest threat is yep. white supremacy. Yep. And this will be during a public whistleblower hearing by the House Select Committee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government, led by Jim Jordan. And this will happen on Thursday. It hasn't said yet whether it's going to be on TV. It really needs to be on TV until something's on television. To a lot of people, it's not real. It's got to be on television to be real to a lot of people. I understand. Congressman Jim Jordan the top Republican on the House Judiciary Committee and head of the select committee has secured the in-person testimony of suspended FBI special agents Garrett O'Boyle and Steve Friend, as well as a former FBI state operations specialist, Marcus Allen. President of the Empower Oversight, Tristan Levitt, will also be testifying. The hearing is set to be held at 9 a.m. Eastern Time Thursday, and will focus on the abuses of power the former officials witnessed. They'll be given an opportunity to detail how they have been retaliated against by the FBI, according to a source connected to the committee. The O'Boyle and Friend uh, participated in a closed-door transcribed interview in February conducted by Jordan's committee. According to notes from that interview, the former agents specifically expressed concerns with instructions from FBI leadership that the focus on pursuing domestic violent extremism probes and disregard standard investigative procedures in January 6th cases. In addition, the former officials told the committee they were instructed to pursue J6 investigations over child sex crimes mm. because they were no longer a priority. We'll tell that to the child who's been wow. violated. Specifically, the former agents accused the FBI of inflating statistics on domestic violent extremism to fit the Biden administration's political narrative that extremism is on the rise nationwide. See, that's what they're white, trying to— White extremism. Yeah, and MAGA is white extremism yeah. to them. That's all about trying to win back the black voter and the, and the Spanish well, voter. Well, and with villainizing white people. That, that, and also they have this fantasy that they can declare MAGA a domestic hate group and Absolutely. outlaw it. Okay? The manipulative— um, Case file practice creates false and misleading crime statistics. See, they have records of this, Jordan, constituting false official federal statements. That, that's a meaning crime, federal felonies, for in wrote in an affidavit. Instead of hundreds of vest investigations stemming from an isolated incident at the Capitol on January 6th, FBI and DOJ officials point to significant increases in domestic violent extremism and terrorism around the country. Friend had a security clearance revoked last September after he vocalized concerns to his superiors, which he described 
in an affidavit as being a clear retaliatory move by the FBI against him. The other guy, O'Boyle, he's also lost his security clearance. Allen, who has not yet sat before the select committee, is expected to present new evidence to the lawmakers on Thursday. The hearing comes after the Republicans published a 1,000-page report on FBI and DOG, DOJ politicization. Some of these words are hard to say, guys. Right. The report included information on disclosures from 14 whistleblowers. I mean, look at all these whistleblowers we've got. All these whistleblowers have uh, from the bureaucracy have been coming to these Republican committees and, and blowing the whistle. You know, unlike Vindman, Vindman had uh, blew the whistle on something that was everybody knew about with a phone call. Um, 14 whistleblowers revealed FBI leadership de- demonstrated a political bias against conservatives. Manipulated domestic violence, extremism statistics for political purposes, and downplayed the investigation into Hunter Biden, among other alleged abuses of power. This is huge stuff. I'm really shocked the FBI is so liberal that so many <clears throat> higher ups in there are like political. I don't know if liberal they're activists. I don't know if they're. Uh, they may be liberal or activists, about Trump, you think? but I, I I think they're into having control over the country. I and think they Trump out. Obviously. They think they run the country. And Trump cut them off of that. One of the largest allegations at the FBI is that the FBI worked to force out conservative FBI employees. During the select committee's first hearing, lawmakers dug into that issue specifically. Jim Jordan said the hearing was being conducted to shine a light on disclosures by good, brave FBI agents who are willing to come forward and give us the truth. Um, Grassley, who's awesome. And Ron Johnson testified as the select committee's featured witnesses. The senators, both of which have led the charge, it goes on and on. See, you know, if you, this is, these things are amazing. Now, I, I got to tell you, okay, and this, I, we, anytime these issues come up, yeah. I have to say this because, and, and, you know, I know a lot of people listening are, well, unless Comey goes to jail, it means that, that's, listen, no one who's famous and a household name is going to go to jail, Right. Comey, none of these people. And, and not only are they not going to go to jail, the next tier down aren't going to go to jail. If anyone goes to jail, it'll be people we've never heard of that are very low level. The famous people never go to jail, okay? You've got to accept that. But what happens, it's like we were talking about in the first segment. These are cockroaches. When you shine the light on what they're doing, they hide, they run, yeah. they're forced out. And when Trump comes back, into the White House. See, what they're doing in, the, in these house, these great House committees, Comer, Jordan, Marjorie Taylor Greene, we, we, yeah. what they're doing is setting the stage for President Trump to do what he's talked about doing exactly. in his recent rallies. They're letting him know. Fi- well, they're putting on the record. So when Trump right. says when, in his second term, he's going to fire all these people. Right. He's going to fire him. Just fire him. He doesn't care what they, they're going to fire him. So what all these Republican committees are doing is collecting evidence, getting sworn testimony, and something that they can hand to Trump so he can fire all these people and take our country back from these evil doers. This is amazing. Yeah, I wonder, they've talked about dismantling the FBI. Can he do that? Well, I don't— I mean, they do have branches a lot that of do these, help solve crimes. Well, so I think the problem is just in Washington. Well, a lot of these things are done through Congress, and getting anything passed through both houses of Congress and everything is nearly impossible. Yeah, I, true. You know, but what they, what they can do is get rid of the political people right. in Washington that are all about keeping political control for the establishment and the bureaucracy and the donors and everything else. Well, the thing that's else. different, too, than when he ran the first time, there's a lot more MAGA people in the government now because before, yeah. you know, they're really – the people that were already in the government weren't MAGA. They pretended to be. But now you have people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and all these other people – Comer and the and Byron Douglas and all these people that have come up into politics after Trump won. And they're MAGA people. And I think there'll be more people friendly to him and willing to fight on his side than than were before. And I think he'll go into the office with a much different perspective yeah. than last time. I mean, he definitely, I think, learned a lot of lessons. And I think he understands and he he has said that that he knows who he can and can't trust now. And I think he went in very trusting 
And he thought that because he made political donations to people that they would be loyal to him. And it just yeah. doesn't work. It's not mm-hmm. like a business. It's totally different. He ran the country like a business, mm-hmm. but the government does not run like a business. It runs more like a moth like a mafia right. family. Yeah. And they're they're not loyal to him. They're loyal to their party and they're loyal to their donors. And and whatever the agenda is that they're trying to push through. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That that supersedes Trump in, in That's Washington. True. Now, we just had Mother's Day yesterday. Now, we are one month away from the most important day of the year, which, of course, is Father's Day. Mm. And if you go to MyPillow.com, <laughs> there are great gifts for dad on his day. And I'm a dad, and I can tell you. Yeah. And I'm going to make my Father's Day recommendations throughout the next few weeks on the program. But uh, there's two I want to talk about today. Okay. One of them is the MyPillow bathrobe. The MyPillow bathrobe is on a closeout sale right now at MyPillow.com with our promo code Kane. It's just $59.98, all sizes and styles. There's two different styles, a heavy style and a lighter one. Kathy and I have the heavier one. There's a lighter one. Every dad loves a good bathrobe. Yeah. And, you know, the uh, MyPillow bathrobe is a little extra special. And let me tell you, we've had our bathrobes, I don't know, what, two years now? Yeah. And they look like the day we got them. Have I you- think the way to gauge is really your climate where you live. If you live up north where it's cold most of the time, I would get the thicker one because it's really plush and really keeps you warm. And my mom has the thinner one, and she uses it when she gets out of the pool because it's like a terry cloth mm-hmm. material, and she gets she swims every day, and she'll get out of the pool, but it's warm here, mm-hmm. and she'll wrap herself up in that. She loves it, dries her right off, and then she'll just stick it in the washing machine. Yep. So I think the because some people might say, well, I'm not sure which one to get. I think if you live up north where it's cold, like nine months out of the year, the thicker one is your best bet. But if you mm-hmm. live in the southern states like we are, the thinner one is probably you'd use it more. Yeah. Now, this closeout sale was going on the, the last week of Mother's Day there, and it's still going on today. But I wouldn't wait around because the closeout sale will end without notice when they start running out of sizes and colors. They'll have to end it. Yeah. So go to MyPillow.com. Pick up that MyPillow bathrobe for dad on his day, just fifty nine ninety eight with our promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. The other thing that every dad would love, I'm here to tell you, is the three inch My Pillow mattress topper 2.0. Mm. The three inch My Pillow mattress topper 2.0 has cooling technology in it. It's a major upgrade from the original My Pillow three inch mattress topper. We have each. We have the original and the 2.0. And there's not a dad on this earth who would not love that three yeah. inch My Pillow mattress topper 2.0. It will totally change the. You haven't been sleeping your whole life. You think you have, but you haven't. Had a restful night's sleep until you have the three inch My Pillow mattress topper 2.0. And with our promo code Kane at checkout, K A N E, the mattress topper 2.0 is 40% off and free shipping. 40% off and free shipping. It's a great deal. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. Hey there, dog lovers. I've got some exciting news for you. Bark and Curl, the home of top quality dog grooming products from self-cleaning dog combs, perfect for sensitive skin, to automatic dog bowls, and more. Bark and Curl have all your pooch pampering needs covered. The ultimate dog grooming collection at Bark and Curl features the game-changing dog comb with a hair rejection button. No more tangles, no more discomfort, and no more cleaning hassles. Ensuring a pain-free and easy grooming experience for your furry family family member. Remember, a clean dog means a clean house. Invest in the best for your furry companion. Make grooming a breeze. Your dog deserves the very best, and Bark and Curl are here to provide it. Remember, that's BarkandCurl.com. That's B-A-R-K and C-U-R-L dot com. Happy grooming. Robert Allen Miltonberg invites you to time travel with him to the Roman future. His new novella, available at Amazon.com and Barnes & Noble. It's the golden age of Rome, a time of peace and prosperity. And Scadius Commodius Lavatorius is its greatest scientist. But for all he's achieved, one question haunts him. Will Rome survive the test of time? There's only one way to find out. Come along on this cosmic romp of an adventure. See if you can read the signs any better than a brilliant scientist can. Prediction, science fiction, allegory, 
glory, national glory, this is a satire at its most gladiatorial. Center stage in the Circus Maximus of your mind. A story of time machines and timeless politics, strange Roman cuisine and gambling parlor tricks, spinning gold and crossing the river Styx. That's the Roman future. Available on Kindle and paperback. Go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble now and visit the Roman future by Robert Allen Miltonberg today. Are you on the hunt for the most comfortable, stylish, and witty t-shirts that make a statement? Look no further than rightswittywears.com. With a diverse range of unique and clever messages on unisex t-shirts, Rights Witty Wears has something for everyone. Whether you're shopping for yourself or looking for that perfect gift, you're sure to find just what you need. At Rights Witty Wears, customer satisfaction is their top priority. That's why they're committed to providing you with an excellent shopping experience, offering a fantastic selection of t-shirts tailored to meet your needs needs and reflect your personality. Not sure what you want? No problem. Their user-friendly eShop offers multiple ways to help you find the perfect shirt that suits your style and ignites your confidence. Don't miss out. Head over to rightswittywears.com right now. Make sure to use the promo code podcast to receive an exclusive 10% discount on your purchase. Make a statement, embrace your style, and enjoy the best shopping experience at rightswittywears.com. That's rightswittywears.com. Happy shopping. I Are you tired of wearing the same old boring clothes day in and day out? Then it's time to upgrade your wardrobe with Living in Sin Clothing. Online at livinginsinclothing.com. The online clothing store that brings you the latest in fashion trends. The collection at livinginsinclothing.com is designed right here in Orlando, Florida. And they offer the best in tattoo and urban inspired clothing that includes the hottest styles that will make you stand out from the crowd. They have a wide variety of clothing for both men and women. Go right now to livinginsinclothing.com and start browsing through their collection, you will be impressed. Not only will you find great items for yourself, but incredible gifts too. Don't settle for mediocrity. Upgrade your wardrobe with Living in Sin Clothing. Not just fashion, but design. Online at livinginsinclothing.com. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. There's one major issue in this country that's in the news every day that I really don't like talking about, and it's all the transgendered stuff. And I I was wrong about this stuff a while back. I never was for it. Don't misunderstand what I was wrong about. I, what I said months ago is this transgender stuff in the news. It's all so stupid. It's so absurd. It's so ridiculous Mm -hmm. that it's going to burn out on its own because it, what, what, what the transgender people are doing is, is so just dumb Mm-hmm. That people in this country are going to say enough of this and end it, and it's gotten worse. And it's worse. and a couple things have happened. And there's one story that I guess has been around for a few weeks, but I I've been ignoring it because there's so many other things going on. But this transgender stuff is is getting out of control. And you heard Megyn Kelly talk about this today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's got a great show. And, and I have seen this story in the New York Post. Yeah, I've seen it in the Daily Mail. And a few uh, and and a few other places, and I when I see the transgender stories, I just my, I let my eyes go right past them. There's too many other things, and but but this is one that's gotten crazy. Yeah. So, um, a transgender man who lives as a woman got into a sorority and has been in the sorority house with the girls. Getting erections and doing other strange things. Mm -hmm. And I heard one of the girls from the sorority interviewed by Megyn Kelly today, and it was just so insane. And this is a story about it. I want to just read through some of this. What school is it at? Uh, It's all all in the uh, story. It's in the University of Wyoming. Um, Several female University of Wyoming students have filed a lawsuit against sorority Kappa Kappa Gamma's University of Wyoming chapter for allowing a biological man mm. to become a member. And his member is often erect when he's in there with the girls, that is according to the women. Um, 
They've been ordered by a U.S. district court judge to reveal their identities to pursue their lawsuit in court. I want to stop there. Mm. What's going on here, it's much like we were talking earlier about the committee giving the Uniparty all the information every time Mark Taylor Green finds a new witness. Right. Since since this thing happened with the swimmer, you know, when that when that Leah Thomas thing was going on, I said, you know, what these girls should do is refuse to participate, get there on the board or whatever that thing is that that box they stand on. And, not swim. and when it's time to go, don't dive in. Let Leah Thomas win and beat themselves. And they didn't do that. Some of the girls came forward anonymously. And the reason they didn't do that is because you get targeted by these people right. and they destroy their lives and they intimidate they intimidate and threaten and scare people. So, and you can lose your scholarship. And you can lose it, yeah. And you, you ask yourself, is this mm-hmm. worth it? So, with this sorority, these sorority girls, the judge is making them identify themselves as a way to try to get them to, yeah, to um, back off. Six of the original seven plaintiffs complied with the order and have revealed their names to the public. And they give their names here, but it's it's not important to us. The names are only important to the um, transgendered activists so they can attack them. The women made two requests for themselves to remain anonymous throughout the case, though the U.S. District Court Judge Alan B. Johnson ruled against both, ordering them to reveal their names if they wanted to continue the lawsuit. The women, still pursuing legal action, are all current students of the school and members of Kappa Kappa Gamma. They're suing the sorority for letting transgender woman Artemis Langford into the university's chapter in September. The central complaint in the student's lawsuit argues that sorority officers broke a contract with them, uh, breached their duty to the sorority. It goes on and on. Uh, uh, Sorority leaders' efforts betrayed the women's understanding of what they were joining in the women's own guiding documents. Um, 21-year-old Artemis Langford has been watching the female members of the sorority house. It's also been alleged that during one of these peeping incidents, the transgender person had a visible erection. Lovely. The complaint stated that the sorority council president uh, goes on and on and on. Okay. Um, One of the female members walked down the hall to take a shower wearing only a towel, which I guess is what girls do in sorority houses. She felt an unsettling presence turned and saw the transgender person watching her silently, checking her out. The woman also provided evidence from uh, the Tinder dating app that he is sexually interested in women. Okay. So what that means is he's he's not really trans. He's like a a creeper who's found some loophole well, to be in the girls' sorority house. Okay, I know this trans stuff's confusing. He, uh, by the way, let me just finish this part, Kathy. All right. The lawsuit from the sorority girls detail that the transgendered person repeatedly questioned the girls about what their vaginas look like, mm. their breast cup size, and whether they were considering breast reductions and birth control. I mean, what a... This is just like um What does he think a, that's a, how a girls pervert. talk? This is the deal. People have to understand. Just because you're trans, it doesn't mean you're gay. And I think a lot of people make that mistake. Caitlyn Jenner says he's still interested in women, even though he is a woman, but he says he's not a gay woman. It's very, very confusing. I understand. But just because you're a man and you identify as a woman does not mean that you are a woman in your section that you are attracted to men. That's correct. Okay. You could still be attracted to women and want to have sex with women. And still it's weird. I know it's bizarre. It's crazy. It's a whole weird thing, but don't make that mistake. Um, and you know, I feel really bad for this. You know, I was in a sorority and a sorority, uh, (laughs) I can't imagine. I mean, I was in a sorority 30 years ago. I cannot imagine. We weren't even allowed to have guys on the second and third floor. Yeah. It was against the rules. (laughs) Because upstairs, where the girls live, you have community bathrooms, you have uh, community bedrooms. We had like sleeping porches and things, and the girls are walking around in their ta- in their towels. And they're not walking around naked, but at least not in my house. But they might have had their underwear or a towel or something. I mean, it was like you know, after you live together, that's how it is. And to have a guy <laughs> up there is insane to me. And um, I know they said in the interview on Megyn Kelly that a lot of the sorority members have left. And this is really a shame. Kappa Kappa Gamma is a very well-known sorority around the country. And there was one at FSU. I wasn't a Kappa Gamma. I was another one. But but it's a very popular sorority, very big. 
And I told you in the car, we were talking about it. I said, they're going to do to the Greek system what they did to the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts. They're going to ruin it. The Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts got infiltrated by the gay community. They tried to make the Boy Scouts for girls, too, and make it all inclusive. And what happened? People stopped going to the Boy Scouts. Oh, no, that's not exactly what happened. The Boy Scouts. People stopped going to the Boy Scouts. The Boy Scouts don't exist any longer. Well, that's what I mean. And what happened, you know, I was was in Boy Scouts. They did want to put girls in there. Well, that. That was later. What ha- I was in Boy Scouts, and Boy Scouts is an awesome thing. It really yeah. was. And then what happened is gay activists yeah, they ruined it. spent about 15 years trying to get openly gay scoutmasters for some reason. This was some obsession. Yeah, and they, we know why. And they finally won. And well, That's what's happening here at well, the beginning. It's yeah. still starting well, now. Well, let me, let me finish with the, with the scouts because what, what the activists did to the scouts is destroyed, and here's what happened. Yeah. So after about 15 years— The gay activist, through the court system, won the right to have openly gay scoutmasters and openly gay Boy Scouts. And what happened over the years is after 15 years of this negative publicity, parents stopped putting their boys in scouting because of all the bizarreness with the openly gay scoutmasters. And then it, 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 it got to a point after all these years, after a decade and a half, it may have even been 20 years actually, the Boy Scouts of America had almost totally evaporated except for the Mormons. The Mormons were very active mm-hmm. in Boy Scouts, and the Boy Scouts of America was surviving only because of the large Mormon participation. And when, when the Boy Scouts finally lost, um, the Mormons pulled out of, the, of scouting in a desperate attempt to mm-hmm. save the Boy Scouts of America— They started to allow girls and now I don't even know if it exists anymore. So, you know, and that's a, that's a terrible, terrible thing. Liberals destroy everything they touch. Everything good. They destroy everything good. And this is what's happening now because what's happening now is not going to be an outlier for long. You're going to see this happening because the judge is siding with this trans woman, Artemis. You're going to see other guys doing this now in other houses. Um, and, uh, I don't believe this guy is transitioning at all. I think it's just a guy and he's a pervert. I mean, that's what Megan Kelly said too. And I agree. What kind of a guy goes and, and joins up and, and says he's a girl and joins up and, and hangs around and is getting erections. Here's the deal. If you have a penis, you're a man. I don't care if you wear a wig. I don't care if you get hormones, you Mm. are still a dude. Yeah, And until you get it cut off and fixed and shaped, you're still a guy. Even then, you're still a guy, biologically. But if you got a penis, you're a man. I mean, that's the way it is. If you can get an erection, you're a man. Oh, my goodness. And like I said before, I hate to be blunt. If if just because you're a trans woman, it doesn't mean you're gay. You can still be a trans woman and be attracted to girls because you're biologically still a man. So this is absurd, and I feel really bad for these sorority girls. I mean, oh yeah, when you're in a sorority, it's a big deal. It was a big part of my life, and those girls are like your family away from home, and you have rituals and and initiation that's all secret handshakes and all this stuff. You have all that stuff, and it's not meant for guys. It's a girls' club. You have fraternities for guys. You have sororities for girls. That's the way it goes. I'm interested to see if a girl, I cannot imagine this, would ever be a trans guy Mm -hmm. and try to get into a fraternity, how that would go down. Now, they probably wouldn't care, but (laughs) because it's a girl, but depends on what she looked like. But you never know. But, you know, I'm not saying it hasn't happened. And maybe there have been instances where you've had guys pretend to be girls, maybe Mm -hmm. back in the day, or and, and nobody knew. But somebody like this, and this guy does not live in the house, but he's fixing to be moving in over, over, over the next year. That's, and they're, so they're trying to stop that from happening. That's going to be a major problem because he's going to be sleeping there, showering there. Right now, he just goes and has lunch and, and watch. I don't know why. He, and he's, I guess he hangs out upstairs because if you're a member, you can hang out upstairs. Mm-hmm. And he hangs out upstairs and sees them walking around in their their underwear and stuff. Oh my goodness! And uh, but once he moves in, how are these girls going to feel safe mm-hmm. sleeping there at night with this guy creeping around? Yep, uh, doing God knows what, looking at him while they're in their under. I mean, oh they've goodness. already lost a bunch of members, 
And I think these sororities, they're so consumed with being woke and not being deemed bigoted that they're going to end up opening this can of worms. And I think it's the beginning of the end of the Greek system. It's not going to happen yet, but like the scouts, I think in 15, 20 years, these activists are going to are going to destroy these organizations. I really well, feel what that they're, way. What they're People doing, aren't going to join them what, anymore. What they're like doing said. is they are destroying they're destroying uni- uh, organizations that unify people. You know, like you've been out of college for a long time and you're still friends with your sorority sisters. You know, um, Boy Scouts, you know, me, me being in Boy Scouts, you know, I, I have a kinship with other guys that were scouts, you know, and all that stuff. They're trying to destroy the things in our society that make our society and our culture what it is. Well, the girl that was being interviewed made a good point. And she said, what's happening with these trans activists is she said, they're taking away what makes women special. And she said, now they don't even like want to define what a woman is. So she said, so now there's nothing special about being a woman. You have guys on TikTok saying that they, they swear they can get their period and, and that they can get impregnated when they're biological men. I mean, these are not mentally well, stable you people. Know, when- and she said, now it's like, they, now kids are yeah. being taught that there is no gender and you can choose, you could choose your gender, even though there is no gender. And she said, so being a woman, there's nothing special about it or being, a, it's, it's, yeah. I well, feel sorry you for know, these kids. Th- this, this is, it's this is the thing, you know, the media, how many times have you heard the media talk about the women vote with Republicans? They talk about it with Trump a lot. Oh, he's alienating the soccer moms and the minivan crowd and the mid suburban women. I, I never hear them talk about how the Democrats are alienating the female vote with all this transgender stuff like this sorority issue with the athletes. Now, I want to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters. We're going to welcome a new top Patreon supporter in a moment. But uh, those of you that are Patreon supporters, thank you so much for your support. And all Patreon supporters have access to commercial free editions of all of our podcast episodes. And I upload them on the Patreon page. Okay. And our top Patreon supporters get a live on-air thank you shout out. So the names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Wesley, Macho, Rome, Wisconsin, Mike P, Carlos, Paulette, John, Arctic Fox. David and Richard, and we have a new top Patreon supporter, Kathy, who is Melissa. Melissa, yes, welcome, thank Melissa. You, Melissa, our latest top Patreon supporter. Now, if you would like to become a patron of the program, there's a link in the description of this and every episode. There's a direct link on my website, BrianCraigShow.com, and the direct website address is Patreon.com/slash Real Brian Craig Show. Patreon.com/slash Real Brian Craig Show. We'll take a quick break. And be right back. Are you ready for a literary ride like no other? Brace yourself for The Moron at the End of This Book. Journey through a world of short stories where a resourceful Mississippi child stumbles headfirst into the beautiful madness of existence. It's a rowdy, riveting roller coaster of emotions. Funny, a touch sad, often poignant, and always honest. This book captures the essence of life's strange journey seen through the eyes of our unlikely hero, The Moron. Brilliantly crafted and soulfully written, The Moron at the End of This Book is more than just a collection of stories. It's meditation on the perplexities of being a person. Are you ready to dive in? You can find your copy in bookstores, on Amazon, or at moronbook.com. Embark on a journey that will make you laugh, cry, and perhaps see a bit of yourself. The Moron at the End of This Book. It's strangely human. Order your copy right now. Do you have a hobby you love that you would like to turn into a lucrative business? You have the skills and the desire, but you're not sure how to make this dream a reality? The book, Artist to Entrepreneur, from author Patrick Gamaliel, is written to help artists of all types make the shift from having a hobby to having a full-fledged business. Artist to Entrepreneur is perfect for anyone who has ever considered monetizing their creative talent. It can help you fast-track your way to building a six-figure business. Dive into the mindset shift that needs to happen for an artist 
just like you to move from a hobbyist to a successful business owner. If you're an artist looking to turn your passion into a profitable business, then you need this book. What are you waiting for? Take that first step to freedom and financial security from your art and order your copy of Artist to Entrepreneur from author Patrick Gamaliel, available on Amazon. Are you a fan of horror novels that keep you on the edge of your seat? Look no further than EVO H2O from author John M. R. Wetzel. Available right now on Amazon. In a world destroyed by nuclear fallout, one company claims to have the solution to make the world capable of supporting life again. But is it too good to be true? Join the adventure and face the horrors of a world forsaken by God, full of unimaginable dangers. Author John M. R. Wetzel's vivid storytelling will translate transport you to a post-apocalyptic world where survival is the only option. Will you survive the horrors that will await you? Find out when you read EVO H2O, available in Kindle and paperback on Amazon. Chat GPT. Everyone's talking about it, but did you know that you can make money using Chat GPT? Get ready to make money easily and quickly using Chat GPT with your copy of the must read book, The Chat GPT Millionaire. Making money online has never been this easy. Updated for GPT 4 from author Neil Dagger. This is the ultimate guide to creating passive income, writing engaging content, and finishing client projects in just minutes. With over 150 act as prompts, you can use ChatGPT for whatever you need. Social media content, blog posts, video scripts, software apps. The uses are endless. Order your copy right now on Amazon and get a free ChatGPT prompt cheat sheet and no-nonsense guide on how to build wealth. Start your journey to financial freedom and order your copy of The ChatGPT Millionaire from author Neil Dagger on Amazon. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. You know, Ron DeSantis is trending on the Twitter today. And, you know, he's doing a lot of things that are good, okay? But you got to question his reasoning. Like today, uh, Ron DeSantis announced a signing uh, of a new law to ban uh, all these weirdo things they're teaching at the state university systems, you know, that we've been hearing about. He's, he's finally signed that into law. Here's the thing, okay? Ron DeSantis is signing all kinds of very conservative things, which are good, right? Limiting abortions to six weeks, all these things. But you still can't trust him. Right now, he is trying to convince people that he is an uber MAGA conservative when he outed himself. And I'll tell you, uh, I got a couple reports from people. Steve was one of them who, who told me this, but others, that Ron DeSantis' speech in Iowa was not that good, that it was amateur hour. And I went to find that speech today, and I could find it in clips, finding the entire unedited speech of Ron DeSantis. Like on YouTube. No, I could not find on you. Um, finding the unedited speech of DeSantis ain't that easy. Well, just I like saw clips, just like the Trump town hall, and I thought his speech was fine. I don't, I don't nah. know what Steve's talking about. I know, I know you're against DeSantis, and I'm not happy with him either. But nah. I'm going to be honest. And I saw clips, and his speech was fine. I thought, I thought he touched on a lot of good points. He did attack Trump, though. He he! I love these people that attack Trump without saying their his name. Oh, they're, they're cowards! They're cowards. He's it's Voldemort. Like, it's like Voldemort. Yeah. So he said, you know, I, we're not here to entertain or brand people or blah Whatever. blah blah. As he's branding, he's making direct yeah. at, direct attacks on Trump without saying his name, which I thought was very cowardly. But he did touch on other issues that are important uh, to discuss. He is doing a lot of good in this state. Um, uh, I just put up a new poll where Trump's lead has gotten even bigger. Um, I wish Trump hadn't canceled his rally, but I think he had no choice because of the tornado warning. Mm -hmm. Um, but he'll have another one soon. I just felt bad because so many people came from all over to be there, but you know, things happen, you know, that pesky global warming business, Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, they, they really feel the DeSantis people that once he announces and he's getting ready, I read to sign that law, that bill into law soon to allow him to run 
And uh, they really believe, even Kaylee McEnany said this uh, before I stopped watching Fox, that uh, once he runs, his poll numbers will go up. Well, he's got mm-hmm. a long way to go because there's like a 50 point gap, 50 to 60 point gap sometimes between him and Trump. And uh, he has a long way well, to go. The, the and, latest poll is 56. Trump's 56 points ahead. Yeah. I mean, so I can't see him making that up. I mean, no. <laughs> tr- they have thrown everything at Trump, everything. OK, but the kitchen sink. He's still way ahead. There is nothing DeSantis can do or say that's going to hurt this guy. There, there's no trick he can pull out of his sleeve. There's no October surprise. There's nothing he can do to try to make Trump look bad. In fact, the more they try to make him look bad, the more popular mm-hmm. he gets. And I, I don't understand. I think the media gets this now because I've heard people on the left say that, you know, we're just, you know, when the route, when the town hall happened and when the indictment happened, they, they, even Bill Maher said this is going to make Trump even more pop- popular. They understand that now, but they they can't help themselves. They can't stop. But he is not going to be able to avoid saying Trump's name forever. And I got to tell you, after Trump's performance on the CNN town hall, oh, that was beautiful. Uh, DeSantis should be very afraid of facing him in a debate because I think Trump is going to be a pit bull. I think you're going to see him nastier than he's ever been. Um, and I think he's going to go after DeSantis. He's going to go after him like well, he's going to have to. He's going to have to. If if DeSantis he's runs, he's going to go right for the jugular. Because I'm not, I'm not so sure DeSantis is going to run. It, it's been two and a half weeks. They since, keep saying he since, is. Two and a half weeks ago, they passed that bill allowing him to run for president and state governor. He's not signed it yet. He, he he may announce he's running, but yeah. he's having some second thoughts and, and Jeb and all these jerks, Paul Ryan. I don't know. Are trying to talk him into he's it. He's going to Iowa. He's traveling around and he looked really happy when he gave his speech. And I I don't think so. I think he's still deluded himself that, uh, deluded, he's, that, yeah. that he can win it. And I think he's still I, I thought that true that he that, like you said, that he was backing down. And even Trump said that. But when I saw him give his speech in Iowa, the clips I saw. He looked very happy, and his wife is just beaming. I mean, she is just has stars in her eyes for being the first lady. And uh, somebody, please get her a new stylist, by the way. But but I look at them, and they I don't think he's backing out at all. You know, DeSantis's wife to me, she's very smart. I've heard her talk, and she's no, I like she's her, very but smart. She, she just can't dress. But, but she looks like um, she looks like a a southern beauty pageant local beauty pageant girl. Yeah, she has horrible clothes. That's yeah, she a doesn't. horrible hairdo. Now, I was reading this article in The Hill. It's about us in Florida, about how Florida became such a conservative state. Yeah. And, they, and they got all these these um, reasons why, you know, Republican power plays, pandemic politics, Democrat missteps, according to a dozen strategists. Da, da, da. Let me tell you, th- th- this. why is Florida so so red? And I, I tell you guys a lot, Florida has been a Republican state for 25 years. When Jeb got elected— governor the first time the republicans have controlled the governor's mansion and the state legislature for 25 years and it's it's been conservative longer than you realize but what's happened true where the democrat florida is a big state very big state it's much much bigger than people realize people don't realize how big florida is it is massive and we're on track to become the most populated state okay to be california and it's not be- – and, and the reason it's become as conservative as it is today is not um, because of people moving and stuff like that. Things like that have helped, but it's not, it's not that. It's not the pandemic. What's happened, the big transition in Florida mm-hmm. has been with the retirees. It, the, the demographic of retirees has changed, and the retirees are people that – now people that retire to Florida – are people that grew up during the Reagan era. They were adults in in the workforce during the Reagan era, and they're conservative. When Florida was a Democrat state, we used to have in Florida, and uh, we used to call them FDR Democrats, Mm -hmm. the Franklin Roosevelt Democrats. The the FDR Democrats uh, were Democrats that grew up during the Depression and all that stuff in the Second World War, and sadly, they're almost all gone now. The FDR Democrats are gone. Yeah. And those those are the Depression era people yeah. and the uh, children of a lot of them, but mostly the Depression era people. They're all gone. 
And the government came in and in their mind, it's not true because the New Deal didn't work and, and all kinds of things. So I'm not going to get sidetracked in today. But, but the, the, the retirees of the 70s and in the 80s and in the 90s during the Clinton era, they were FDR Democrats. And they believed that the government came in and saved the country from the Great Depression. So they were all big government people. Right. And that era of retiree is gone. They've all died. I'm sure there's a couple still around, but not very many. And the new era of Democrats are just from a more conservative, the Reagan generation. That's why Florida's changed. The retiree of today is different than it was 20, 30 years ago. And that's why we're so conservative in Florida. Like the big, the big retirement community in Florida is the Villages, which is up in the Ocala area north of Orlando, where Walt Disney World is. And that is the most conservative place mm-hmm. on the planet, uh, the villages. And uh, it used to be in the retirement communities, it, they, there used to be a joke, okay, in the retirement communities here in Florida, that every time, the, the big retirement community of yesteryear is a place called Century Village. Yeah. And a lot of people call it Cemetery Village because <laughs> the people are so old there. And there was an article in, in one of the local newspapers. And it said, every time an ambulance leaves Century Village, the Democrat Party loses a supporter. And it's just not that way anymore. The, the, the retirees are more Republican than they used to be. That's why. All these other things that they – you know, these, these political strategists don't know anything, okay? They, no. they, they look at people in groups and numbers and everything else. And if you think about it, there's a lot of other groups that used to be – liberal that aren't blacks aren't as liberals they used to be a lot of republican blacks jews you know i remember when i when i first started on the radio in the early 90s there were like three republican jews in south florida that was it you get a call on the radio from a conservative jew it was like a big deal now almost every every jew i know is a republican it's it's just not it's not it's not that way there's been a big that depression era generation has died off and their children and grandchildren are are conservative. The only place the Democrats are gaining in Florida is with Cubans. A lot of people don't realize this, but the new generation of Cubans are more liberal really? than their parents and grandparents that fled Cuba. Yeah, they want to take us to communism. The children and grandchildren of the escapees from Castro's Cuba want to take us back to communism. But that's why Florida is so conservative and people are um, waking up. I think the Democrats, though, are making a miscalculation with these illegals. I think that they assume that they're going to come into this country and be Democrats. But a lot of them are fleeing socialistic and communistic countries and they don't like it. And they come here and they actually I've I've heard a lot of people that are from South America on the news or from China or whatever. And they're conservative. They're Republican because they're like, I come from a country like this and you don't want to live there. It's a horrible place. And people that come from Venezuela and places like that don't assume they're going to be Democrats because they see a lot of what the Democrats are doing align with how their countries are run. And uh, they, so they understand and they, they don't want that. They come here for freedom and they come here for for a different way of life. So I think they're miscalculating what these people, their political persuasions are going to be sometimes. Yeah. I think they're assuming. But they're, the, the reason that they're allowing all these illegals in and the reason that they're trying to paint white people as so racist is because they are losing so much of these voters. They, mm-hmm. they have, they've lost so much of the black vote, the Spanish vote, the Jewish vote, the Asian vote. They're losing these mm-hmm. little subgroups that they've held on to for so long because they've woken up. Mm-hmm. And realized it because they've gotten so radicalized, they're they're walking away, and uh, they're they're panicking, and they're getting desperate, and they're pulling out all their typical That's moves right. and tricks to manipulate people into voting for them. That's right. Now, listen, we're all out of time for today, but we will be back next time. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Thanks everyone for tuning in, and we will talk to you next time. 
Get the competitive edge with Client Hub X, their online business growth strategy consultation session. Looking to grow your online business? Look no further than their online business growth strategy session. Their team of experts has worked with some of the biggest brands in the world and will be involved in formulating a customized strategy tailored to your unique needs. From avoiding common mistakes and pitfalls to learning from the best, their team is here to guide you every step of the way. Their easy to implement strategies are designed to help you achieve your online business goals quickly and efficiently. Whether you're a startup or an established business, their service is perfect for anyone looking to take their online growth to the next level. Visit MacFordDigital.co. That's MacFordDigital.co. 